Hello friends, in today's video we'll be looking at shapes in Xamarin Forms and we're going to be making use of this feature to design a login page. As you can see, this is the final result that we're expecting to get. Uh, in this design, you're not making use of any image, everything you are seeing on the screen, uh, we use this, the Xamarin Forms shape uh, to, to build this from scratch. So the only asset that we're using in this, in this uh, design is the background video that you are seeing. Alright, if this is your first time here on this channel, we are committed to show you how to develop good looking mobile applications and also we discuss strategies to become a better mobile app developer. If that interests you, I want you to click on that subscribe button now and also click on the notification bell icon and turn on all notifications so that you'll be notified when I upload new content. All right, without wasting time, let's get started. So I have just 2019 open here and I've created a new project called login page. And the first thing I want to do is to update the marine forms to the latest version. In order to use the shapes, you have to update the marine forms to the marine forms 4.7. So let's install this. All right, I haven't done this. The next thing I want to do is to set the experimental flag because at the time of recording this video the Xamarin form shapes is still in the experimental so I'm going to I'll go to appdesigner.cs and right here uh, I'll have to add uh, the experimental flag all right so I'm setting two flags here I'm setting the shapes underscore experimental and I'm setting the media element underscore, underscore experimental all right, so let's go ahead and design our page. So I'll go to main page, the Zamel of CS. So I'm going to remove this so I don't need it. And what I'm going to do is to start with a grid and set give it a background. All right, so I have a grid that has a background. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do in this grid is to create an overlay and uh, I want that overlay to be on our media element so let me start with this uh, as a positive of 0 0.3 that is 30 percent I'm giving it this color so let me save and let's see what we have here all right so you can see this is what we have okay so right on this right on this uh, box view I want to create a grid that will contain all our shapes so I have a grid, I'm setting the height to 520, giving the a margin of 30 all around. Okay, so looking at our the prototype that we that, that we make use of, we have three three different shapes. So on this uh, prototype, we have three different shapes. We have the first one that is transparent, we have the second one, and we have the third shape. Alright. So, uh, so we have a grid that will contain all these. In order to create this, we need to make use of uh, the path. That's a new feature in Xamarin Forms. So I'm going to do this. And I, will still, I will still explain how to get the data out. So we have a path and the background color is set to white. We have this uh, stroke thickness and um, we have opacity set to 0 0.5. The field is set to white. Now you can try not to set this this stroke thickness as it's not really necessary. So let me save this. So as you can see, our shape is starting. So what I'm going to explain to you later is how to get this data out. If you don't, if you don't have it, I will explain how you can get this data out. So the only thing that is um, that, is, that I'm here to explain here is this data part. So you can see you have a part, and it is, you can use it as a normal as a normal uh, actually normal elements in your in your uh, XAML and set properties like horizontal options, opacity, and the likes. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is to uh, define the next shape, which is the white shape. So it's following the same pattern. Uh, this is the data that that constitutes the shape so i'm going to save as you can see we have the next shape and then lastly i'm going to bring the last shape right here 
and I'm putting the same. As you can see, this is the last shape. So we have our shape right here, and um, the next thing I want to do, I'm going to start with a stack layout. Stack layout would be so still be on this uh, inside this grid. Stack layout will be inside this grid. And um, inside the stack layout, we have um, the login. We have the login text, and we have the stack layout that contains the entry. So we have the login text. We have a grid inside that grid. We have uh, we're setting the, the background color to this off white. So that we'll be able to see uh, our entry very well. So I'm going to save this now. Let's see what we have. All right. So this is what we have now. And um, the next thing I'm going to do is to define the uh, the login button. That is the arrow that is that you're going to click to say login. All right. So I'm going to bring in. So it's going to out contain a grid. Inside a grid, I'm going to put this inside this this stack layout right here. So I want to stack everything together from the login text to the, to entries and the and the um the arrow. So on this now we have an ellipse. So this ellipse is part of the Xamarin Forms shape. So you can you can create an ellipse. So you know we have been using paths. You can create ellipse and give it a stroke, a stroke width, and you can set the height, the width properties right here and also have a have a part here and the part contains this data it's a very long data like i said i'll show you how you can get this data and um, i'm setting the stroke line cap to round and the stroke line join to round so let's save this and see what we have all right so you can see this is the arrow for the login uh login all right so the next thing i want to do is to create the um let's see where is that prototype is to create the button here to say login with facebook and login with google all right so right inside this grid outside this, this stack layout i want to have a stack layout and this stack layout is what's going to contain all these buttons. So I'm going to make use of a frame. Inside that frame, let me, let me show you what I'm going to do. So I'm making use of a frame. Inside that frame, uh, okay, this, the frame has some properties right here. Inside that frame, I have a stack layout. And that stack layout contains a part with this data that is showing the data for our uh, icon and a text that is saying with facebook so let me save so as you can see this part is that you're seeing right here is what defines the facebook uh, logo and this is the text and i'm stacking the two together in a stack layout and stack layout inside a frame the frame has uh, a corner radius of 18. all right so the same but the next button also has the same uh attribute so i'm going to Put that outside this frame. This is another frame. So I have this data that contains the Google icon and the text I say with Google. So I'm going to save this so you can see we have this. In order to, if you want to remove this line right here, you have to create a custom renderer to remove the line. You can clearly do that. So to do that, I'm going to stop this. So let me come to the Android. Uh, Project. So I have a uh, custom entry renderer. All right, so I'm going to make this public. So I'm going to decorate this with some attributes, and that is to is to export the renderer. So I'm going to do right up top here assembly export renderer and I'm going to inherit 
this from the entry renderer. So let's resolve this namespace. Summary forms. All right. Let's add uh, a default constructor into this so as to remove that uh, absolute warning. All right. So the only thing we're going to do in this uh, renderer is to remove the line. So we are overriding the on element change and we are, we are checking if the old element is null by taking the control and set the background color to null. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to run so that we can see what we have uh, right here. So as you can see, the line is gone. So what I'm going to do is come to main page, the Zamelo CS right here. So right on top here, before the overlay for the for this box view, I'm going to set a media element. So this media element set the source to a, a resource a resource uh, in our resource folder called Yuga2 and I want I don't want this to show the uh, playback controls. I want this to continue to play. It's looping equals true, and I'm setting the auto play to true. Horizontal option and vertical option to fill and expand. All right. Uh, in order to have this, so let me first first stop this. So I want to put this yoga yoga um, asset in the, our folder. So in order to do this. We have to put it in the resources folder. I'm going to copy this and inside your resource folder for Android, you have to create a folder called raw. Let's say raw. And inside this, you can paste your assets. Okay, so we have it here. So let's come to the properties and make sure that this is set to Android resource. All right, so for your, for your iOS, you put it inside the resources folder and make sure that it is a boundary resource. All right. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and run our projects. We have our, our design. So let's refresh. Okay. So as you can see now, we have the background image uh, playing now. So if you notice at first, when I launched this, it was not playing. So I I just save this again for auto reload to reload the page uh, before it now starts uh, playing. So I don't know. I, I've noticed this because it's still an experimental. If you are launching uh, the app for the very first time, it's not going to play. So you may want to, if you're using this now, you may want to find the work around that to make sure that your page is successfully loaded first and find a different trigger for the uh, background image to load. All right. So guys, that's it. That's how to design this page using uh the Xamarin form shape and as you can see we didn't make use of any image at all we only make use of shape and before i go i explain i explain that i'm going to show you how to uh, get those data now in order to get the data this is what you can do you can find any svg file make sure that it's a svg so you can you can get that from if you have a design that can give you the svg then you can make use of that but if you don't you can find an SVG file. Let me show you an example. Okay, so you can find an SVG file. These are SVG files. And what you can do, so this is the Google part. This is the Google part that we use. What you can do is to open, you can open with something like Notepad++. And opening this, this is what you're going to get. You're going to have this and now this is the data part. I mean, this is the data part from this D. You can just take it from here to the end right here. So if you look at this, this M15, this is what we use for our Google uh, part. Uh, so you can take any SVG, open it in a, in a text editor, and copy the parts uh, house from there. So that is how you get the parts from any SVG. Alright guys, if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. So don't forget to share with friends. Don't forget to uh, share on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And also, if there's any, uh, if you have any comments, you can drop in the comment section below. I'll be there to respond. 
thank you very much guys and i'll see you in the next video